Good morning, Hong Kong. We're so glad you're worshiping with us online and here in the sanctuary today. We're thrilled to see so many new faces in recent weeks. Let's get you connected to new friends, studies, and small groups. Scan the QR code and let us know your interests. We'll get you plugged in. Join us today as we wander and explore the Northern New Territories with Melody Myers. We're going on a moderate two-hour hike around the wetlands, starting at three. Bring a friend and lots of water, some bug spray and a hat. Get all the details at the welcome desk or, or at the church website. This Wednesday, we've got a great doubleheader. Juliana and Dan are hosting the Spiritual Gifts class online, helping men, women, and young adults identify, understand, and embrace the gifts God has given us. Register to get the Zoom link. Your second option, here in the sanctuary, an evening of prayer. Prayer is changing us, and it's changing Union Church. Come along and lift up our city, nation, and church. And if you need prayer, our leaders will pray for you. I serve Union as the chairman of the missions ministry team. We actively support 25 local and international ministry partners. Sons and Daughters helps people caught in sexual exploitation reclaim a life of love and freedom in Christ. I'm delighted to introduce a new initiative from Sons and Daughters. Dawn has been created to come alongside another group in the sex trade, the men who buy. Hello there, my name is John and I'm one of the team members at Sons and Daughters. It's my privilege and joy to announce and to invite you to partner with our new initiative we're starting called Dawn. Dawn is a one-on-one -on -one self referral program designed to help men decrease and eliminate their purchasing of sex. Alongside the larger mission of Sons and Daughters, our mission is to help those caught in sexual temptation to reclaim a life of love, family, and freedom. Our hope is to help such men to focus on the futures ahead of them each new day, each dawn, if you will, and to align their future with their best hopes. We believe that the hope and joy of God's people found in Jesus will draw others to the Lord away from the darkness of this world, especially in a sexual exploitation business. Our motivation in addition to this comes from some of the following statistics. You see one out of three active sex buyers strongly agree they do not want to do it again. The same percentage self-identify as Christians. 54% of sex buyers say they're currently in a relationship and about the same percentage have children under the age of 18 at home. We believe that empowering men who want to stop buying sex to stop will transform individuals, families, and the church. We're looking for male team members who will meet one-on-one -on -one with men who have referred themselves into the program, either over the phone, video call, or over coffee, either weekly or bi-weekly, really depending on the beneficiary's schedule and preferences. In the volunteer registration process, you will go through various trainings to equip you to better understand the sexual exploitation business in Hong Kong and the model that we use. These men are raising a hand for help. Learn how to mentor them. Contact Dan Tups to sign up for an info session run by Dawn on Saturday, July 16th at 1230. Now is the time to prepare to worship. Let's quiet our hearts and focus on the goodness of God. I invite you all, here in person, online, at home, and in cafes or wherever, to stand up and pass the peace to a neighbor. May the peace of Christ be with you.
Good morning once again. We're so glad you could join us for worship here at Union Church. Uh, if you would, please join me in our call to worship. The Lord reigns. Let the people tremble. The Lord is great. He is exalted over all the people. Exalt the Lord our God. Worship him. Holy is he. Let's do that this morning. Let's worship him uh, as we sing Crown Him with Many Crowns. Please join me as we affirm our faith together. We believe in God the Father, who has revealed his love and kindness to us, and in his mercy saved us, not for any good deed of our own, but because he is merciful. We believe in Jesus Christ, who gave himself up for us, to free us from our sin and set us apart for himself, a people eager to do good. We believe in the Holy Spirit, whom God poured out on us generously through Christ our Savior, so that justified by grace, we might become heirs with the hope of eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Jesus said that it is more blessed to give 
than to receive. And so this is a, an opportunity during our service where we get to experience the joy of giving. And uh, just a reminder, there are multiple ways to give. You can give now as the ushers come. Uh, you can go to our website to give online or write a check and send it to the church office. So at this time, let's continue our worship through the giving of our tithes and offerings. And as we sing, Have Thine Own Way, we invite you to please stand on the final verse. Please join me as we pray together. Lord God, we do dedicate ourselves to you, both individually and corporately as a church. And Lord, we ask that you would have your way uh, with us, through us. And Lord, we dedicate these gifts that have been given so generously this morning. We ask that you would use them in the ways that you see fit to uh, bless others, to further your kingdom, and to share the good news of the gospel. So, Lord, we pray that you would do so according to your will and for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. We are very excited this morning that we have the privilege of celebrating a baptism. And so, at this time, Steve, I invite you to come on up. It is always exciting when we uh, get to baptize uh, someone. And baptism is uh, an act of obedience. We read in scripture that Jesus was, uh, he said to us, go into all the world, preach, teach, and baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so uh, it's something that, that we are obedient uh, in doing. Uh, we know that Jesus himself was uh, baptized by John the Baptist and and so it's also a sign of identification with Jesus and so Steve um, you can read about your testimony in uh, your bulletin this morning and so that's for you to take away uh, but one of the uh, COVID has been challenging for many of us uh, and I think uh, that that challenge actually brought Steve to the website, uh, was searching for hope and for answers and came upon Alpha and participated in Alpha this winter. And uh, we enjoyed baptism classes. And today he is publicly professing his faith in Jesus Christ. And so uh, we're really excited about that. Steve, do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Do you desire to follow him? Yes. Jesus, uh, Steve, on the profession of your faith, on the profession of your faith, I baptize you. 
In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. And Steve, I seal you with the sign of the cross because you were bought with a price. Jesus' death, his resurrection gives you new life. And it gives you forgiveness of sin. It gives you purpose and meaning and hope. Lord God, we thank you for the gift of new life. We thank you that you called Steve out of darkness to live in light. Thank you that he's created in your image, that he is fearfully and wonderfully made, that you know him, that you love him, that you see him, and that you cleanse him and you free him. We give you thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I think we need to... Uh, Yeah. celebrate with you in all our, our drips. Uh, Steve also will become a member at Union Church, and so I ask you, do you accept him uh, as part of our membership at Union Church? Yes. We do. We do. Um, thank you. Thank you. Was there something you wanted to say? Yeah. Hi, good morning, everybody. Um, I just want to say a couple of words. Um, thank you for your coming to witness my, uh, the most important day of my life. And I would like to thank God to lead me uh, here uh, through the Holy Spirit and the other team members. And maybe I won't come too late and I rather uh, should come earlier. And lastly, um, I want to thank, uh, of course, Pastor Michelle uh, to teach me um, the meaning of the course and uh, arrange this uh, wonderful baptize for me. Uh, thank you. Mm. Thank you. We are so grateful for our Alpha leaders, for Patrick and for Walter and all the leaders that work with Alpha. Uh, and uh, just grateful, you know, that, that the Lord um, is at work in our lives. Even when we don't see him, God is at work. And uh, so we celebrate what God has done in your life today, Steve. To God be the glory. Amen. 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 Thank you. Oh, yes, Steve. We've got presents. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very appropriately, I think we can stand together and sing, I surrender all.
Today's scripture reading is taken from Esther, chapter 4, verses 10 to 17. The context for today's reading is that Haman, the king's number two, is angry at Mordecai for not bowing and giving him respect. Out of rage, Haman convinces the king to destroy the Jews. Mordecai, a Jew, and Queen Esther's father, is distressed when he hears the plan. He goes to the king's court in sackcloth and ashes, hoping to get a message to Queen Esther. His request is that she go into the king's presence, beg for mercy, and plead with the king, or else they all will die. Now let's take a look at the passage. Esther chapter 4, verses 10 to 17. Then Esther spoke to Hathach and gave him a message for Mordecai, saying, All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces know that if any man or woman goes to the king inside the inner court without being called, there is but one law. All alike are to be put to death. Only if the king holds out the golden scepter to someone, may that person live. I myself have not been called to come in to the king for 30 days. When they told Mordecai what Esther had said, Mordecai told them to reply to Esther. Do not think that in the king's palace you will escape any more than all the other Jews. For if you keep silence at such a time as this, relief and deliverance will rise for the, from, for the Jews from another quarter but you and your father's family will perish. Who knows? Perhaps you have come to royal dignity for just such a time as this. Then Esther said in reply to Mordecai, Go, gather all the Jews to be found in Susa and hold a fast on my behalf and neither eat nor drink for three days, night or day. I and my maids will also fast as you do. After that, I will go to the king, though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. Mordecai then went away and did everything as Esther had ordered him. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. Well, good morning. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for new life. We thank you that you are faithful. Lord, may you teach us. May you encourage us. May you build us up. May you spur us on towards love and good deeds. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. This week I found myself uttering the words, It's not fair. Anybody ever mutter those words. It's not fair. Um, this week it came to my attention that a member of my family, who shall remain nameless, uh, purchased an item, but the tag, uh, item of clothing, the, ta the security tag was left on. Now, having discarded the receipt, uh, getting that tag removed has been quite a process. It's been quite, I must say, a hassle. Two trips, two different stores, several phone calls to customer service who wanted detailed information, a lot of information. I found myself uttering those words, it's not fair. You can imagine, I'm not the person, you know, that left the tag on. I'm the person who paid for the item. I'm the person who was using valuable time, valuable energy, trying to solve this problem. It just didn't seem fair. Sometimes life in the, in the small and in the big things seems a little unfair. And sometimes it feels like there's just a lot of opposition that we, we need to push up against. What about your life? When faced with opposition, how, how do you respond? What, what do you do in a situation that has, that where you're confronted with a lot of opposition? Do you stand up and fight for what you know to be true? Do you ignore it? Do you kind of just hope it goes away? 
to get revenge. We're in a new series entitled, God Uses Ordinary People to Accomplish the Extraordinary. And today we're looking at opposition. Opposition, how do we face it? We all have it. How do we handle it? And this morning, there's four characters from the book of Esther that I want us to consider. Uh, the first person is Haman. Now, Haman was a man of questionable character. Scholars would say he fits into the category we find in the book of Proverbs uh, that says this, there are six things that the Lord hates, seven that are detestable to him. And then we read the list. Haughty lies, a, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked schemes, feet that are quick to rush into evil, a false witness who, who pours out lies, and a person who stirs up conflict in community. Scholars think that Haman would fit into that category. Now, who is Haman? Haman was an Agagite. Haman worked for the king, and Agites were descendants from the Amicalites, who were ancient enemies of the Jews. Now, Agites, they were the ones who attacked the children of Israel when the children of Israel were, were coming out of Egypt. And because of this, God just cursed them. He said he condemned them to extinction. Now, even today, during the Feast of Purnum, when the book of Esther is read publicly in the synagogue, readers, when the readers say his name, the people cry out, they start stomping their feet, and they, yelling, they start yelling, may his name be blotted out. Haman. Haman, not a, not a very wonderful, positive character in the Bible. And yet, it was Haman who got the promotion. Ever been in that situation? It's like, really, they got the promotion? How come I didn't get the promotion? At a first glance, it doesn't seem fair that Haman was the one who was promoted by the king. And when Mordecai was the one, just in chapter 2, I know you've been reading along in the book of Esther, in chapter 2 you would have read that Mordecai had actually saved the king's life, but yet it was Haman who got the promotion. Now Haman, he's got this promotion, and everybody started bowing to Haman. When they came into his presence, they would bow to Haman. Well, almost everybody. Mordecai refused to bow to Haman. He, he refused to bow to him, and this enraged Haman. Spiteful, vengeful, Haman lashed out. And instead of punishing just Mordecai, he, Haman punished all the Jews everywhere. They would all pay the price for Mordecai's defiance. Now, Haman, we could say he had a grudge. Haman sought revenge. Grudges. Grudges is one way we can handle opposition. Fun facts. Did you know that crows hold grudges? One study revealed that crows can remember the face of people who capture them. Amazing, right? Another study found that ravens, which th there's crows and magpies and jays that fit into that category, they can hold grudges for up to two years. Note to self, don't annoy a crow. They will remember your face. They will remember you. They hold grudges. Haman, like a crow, he, he held grudges. He desired revenge. Now, what about King Xerxes when he was faced with opposition? How did he respond? What, what did he do? Well, it would appear he did nothing. Uh, King Xerxes was probably a little bit more like an ostrich who had his, his head in the sand. He ignored problems. And uh, we can kind of read and get a taste of, of, of how King Xerxes handled the situation. Uh, Haman said to the king, there's a certain people scattered and separated among the peoples in all your provinces of your kingdom. 
Their laws are different from those of every other people. They do not keep the king's laws so that it's not appropriate for the king to tolerate them. Let a decree be issued for their destruction, and I will pay 10,000 talents of silver. So what did the king do? He, he took off his signet ring from his hand, and he gave it to Haman. Do with them as it seems good to you. First of all, the, the, it wasn't even... The king was giving people that didn't even belong to people, first of all. But also we can see how disinterested King Xerxes is. He, he asks no questions. He gives Haman the keys to the kingdom. King Xerxes was apathetic. He, and the result of his apathy, it was going to, the way the situation was going to go, the Jews, all the Jews, millions of them would be annihilated. Helen Keller said, Science may have found a cure for most evils, but it has found no remedy for the worst of them of all, the apathy of human beings. King Xerxes, head in the sound, apathetic. And then there was Mordecai. When faced with opposition, he was the type of person who, who really took matters in his own hands learning that he and all of his people would be killed, dressed in sackcloth and ashes. Mordecai, he went to the palace gate looking for Queen Esther. You think about it, what, why was he wearing sackcloth and ashes? That, that symbolizes that somebody is grieving. We remember reading about that in the, in the book of Job. But instead of lamenting, instead of wailing and interceding and pouring his heart out to God, instead of asking for mercy and favor for his people, Mordecai went to Queen Esther with the problem. He didn't go directly to God. It is so easy for us to take matters in our own hands and not go to God first. We can try to fix things on our own. Raccoons are an animal who are known to take matters in their own hands. They have very dexterous hands. And literally the name raccoon means taking everything in your hands. Anyone ever been camping? Or put your garbage out and have seen or heard about raccoons getting into everything. Mordecai, he took things in his own hands. He arranged for Queen Esther to be in the palace. And when faced with a God-sized problem, he didn't go to God first. He went to Queen Esther, looking for Queen Esther to solve the problem. But a little bit later in the text that we read today, we can see that Mordecai's perspective is just starting to shift. Um, when you, one of the beautiful features about a raccoon is they have their, their, their very cute um, masks, right? Now these masks are very purposeful. They're not just ornamental. The purpose is to help them see things clearly. Mordecai was now having a shift. He was now able to see the situation a little clearer. He was having a, what we would really call an aha moment. And Mordecai says this. He said, for if you keep silent at this time, relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's family will perish. Who knows? Perhaps you have come to royal dignity for such a time as this. Mordecai declares that God will, will use those who make themselves available to him. If you're willing, God will use you. If you're not, God will find someone else to do what needs to be done. And then there's Queen Esther. Queen Esther, she faced tremendous opposition. The law was against her. No one was allowed to approach the king unless they had been invited. The government was against her. If she approached the king uninvited, he, she could be killed. Her gender, her social status, her influence, her favor was all against, against her. Remember, she hadn't seen the king for 30 days. It was kind of an out of mind, out of, out of uh, sight, out of mind situation. 
But with all that opposition, it did not stop her. Esther, she stepped into the challenge. Esther was kind of like the honey badger. Now, the honey badger is um, a fascinating animal. Uh, the honey badger, this small creature, uh, is considered one of the most fearless animals in the world. Notorious for strength, notorious for, for their toughness. They've been known to attack and to repel some of the fiercest animals in Africa. Lions, hyenas, crocodiles, venomous snakes. The honey badger. So how did Esther confront her opposition? How did she do it? She prayed, right? We read that she, she prayed and not, she fasted and she prayed and not only did she fast and pray, she called Mordecai to rally all the, the, the people to pray. It was time for them to pray. She said, go gather all the Jews to be found in Susa and hold a fast on my behalf and neither eat nor drink for three days, night or day, and I and my maids will also fast as you do. And after that I will go to the king, though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. Praying was critical. Esther realized that she couldn't fight this battle on her own. She couldn't do it alone. She needed the strength, the power, the authority that God would give her through his spirit. And we read uh, about the power of prayer in 2 Chronicles. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear them from heaven and I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. When you call on me and come and pray to me, I will listen. God is asking us to pray. He's asking us to intercede. He's asking us to come to him, and he promises us through these words, through the scripture, that he will hear us, that he will answer, that he will come. Esther, she willingly stepped up, and Esther willingly stepped up and stepped into the challenge. Esther took a God-sized risk, and she stood in full confidence that God was with her. And she put her life in God's hands. She surrendered her life, saying, if I perish, I perish. She recognized that God was in control of her even if she, and she, as she stepped out of her comfort zone. In the words of Romans, uh, if God is for us, who can be against us? And what I find interesting about this text is, remember that Esther had really concealed her faith. She had concealed her, her relationship with God. But God's word says, even if I'm faithless, he will remain faithful. And God remembered her, and God remembered her people, and God answered. He answered her. Esther's story reminds me of, of, of a story um, that happened a number of years ago in the Ukraine. And you might recall this story. It was uh, a story that involved uh, poison, threats, fraud. It was when the Ukrainian reformer Viktor Yashchenko, he, he dared to challenge Viktor Yanukovych, who was backed by Russia. You might remember the story when on election day a survey showed that, that the Ukrainian leader was leading. But yet when the results were, were uh, declared, they had been reversed. And on election night, the state-run television reported these words. They said, ladies and gentlemen, we announce that challenger Viktor Yashchenko has been decisively defeated. But what happened next was remarkable. In the lower right-hand corner of the television screen was a very brave woman. And this very brave woman in the small part of the screen was translating for the hearing impaired. And she gave a very different message in sign language. 
and she said these words in sign. She said, I am addressing all the deaf citizens of the Ukraine. Don't believe what the authorities say. They are lying, and I am ashamed to translate these lies. Yashinko is our president. This translator, she took a risk. This translator took a risk, and this risk changed history. She inspired all the deaf people, the community, to text and to email and to get their friends uh, knowing the truth about the fraudulent elections. And that night, thousands and thousands of people gathered in the square under massive pressure. There was new elections were scheduled, and Yashinko became the undisputed winner. Incredible power in that little corner of a very big screen. It was revolutionary. The human mind plans the way, Proverbs says, but the Lord directs the steps. We all face opposition. Opposition about our faith. Opposition in the workplace. Opposition in our family. Sometimes opposition in church. And opposition, it can be challenging and it can really push us to the brink but it can also be an impetus for change. It can cause us to reach down and to dig deep for help. It can cause us to stand firm in our faith and what we know to be true in the promises of God. It can cause us to find Jesus and see him more clearly. Opposition can bring us to our knees in prayer. Today we baptized Steve. Steve was facing opposition, opposition uh, certainly during this last COVID lockdown. And searching for hope and encouragement, he reached out. He reached out online, he reached out and found Alpha, he reached out ultimately and found Jesus. He found a new life and a, and a new beginning. We can lean into opposition, knowing that God is present and working even when we don't see him. So the question this morning is, how will you handle opposition? Hold a grudge? Bury your head in the sand? Take matters in your own hands? Or go to God in prayer? Go to God fast and pray. But no matter what our opposition, no matter what battle we are facing or fighting, Know that God fights with you and God fights for you. Know that size or position or gender or age or race, it, it doesn't matter when God is at work. You know, we are in a very unique position in, in history, in our church and in our city. And it's no coincidence that God has placed you here and that God has placed you here for such a time as this. There is so much work that needs to be done in prayer, in discipleship, in outreach. But God is building his kingdom and God is using ordinary people like you and, like, and me. And it's not what Esther could do but it's what God could do through Esther. And likewise, it's not what you can do. It's what God can do through you. Will we surrender? Will we step up to the challenge, this God-sized challenge that is before us? Amen. Amen. Lord God, we, we thank you. We thank you that we can give you all our battles, we can give you all our worries, all our fears, all of our oppositions. We can give it to you, knowing that you've given us a full armor. You've given us the full armor of God. And this armor protects us. And this armor enables us to do battle. And we thank you for the spirit of the living God who is within us, that you've deposited in us. Help us to have courage and boldness. Help us to 
um, to know you and to know we're not alone and to know you fight for us and with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 join me as we pray together. Lord, we thank you for your love, your mercy, your grace, forgiveness. Uh, we thank you for being the God who is the giver of good things. Lord, we recognize that all the blessings we have are from you. So we thank you for your goodness, your kindness, your, um, your mercy. 
And Lord, we thank you for your promises. We thank you that you promise to never leave us nor forsake us. Thank you that your word says that uh, greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. Lord, whatever challenges or opposition we may face, we are so thankful that you are right there with us, the almighty, all-powerful God of the universe. Lord, you know our circumstances and you empower us to overcome. Lord, we thank you for that. Uh, we thank you that uh, we can rely on you and uh, draw our strength and wisdom from you. Lord, this morning we um, lift up those who are in difficult situations. Lord, we pray for those who are sick. We pray for your uh, supernatural healing to, to be upon them. Lord, we pray for those who are mourning and grieving the loss of loved ones. Lord, may you surround them with your peace, your love, your comfort. Thank you that you are the God of all comfort, Lord. And Lord, as we look out into this world, we see so much division and strife, uh, even violence and bloodshed. And so, Lord, we ask that your peace would reign. Lord, we long for the day that you will come to restore, to renew, to reconcile. And Lord, in the meantime, we ask that you would use us as your people to be agents of peace, uh, to, to give that peace in a world that desperately needs it. So Lord, help to empower us to live for you uh, throughout this week. Lord, we thank you that you're uh, a God who not only hears our requests, but you answer them according to your will. And we thank you for teaching us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I invite you to please stand as we sing our hymn of response. God, for those who are wondering, should I follow Jesus? May your message of, of hope and of new life and of love and of healing be made real and known. Help us, Lord, to follow you in the good times and the bad times. Help us to follow you when faced with opposition. May you give us the strength and the courage that we need. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the fellowship of his spirit be with you all, now and forevermore. Amen. 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 May you go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.
We are so glad you've joined us for worship today. I'm Pastor Michelle, and we would love to help you get connected. Whether you have children or are a youth or young adult, men, women, we have studies, we have service opportunities. We would love to help you get plugged in to ministry, plugged into learning and understanding God's Word. Please reach out to us, check out our website. We hope to see you soon, whether in person or online. Boys and girls, welcome to Kingdom Kids Sunday Edition. Today and for the next three Sundays, we will discover together the topic of how to pray. This is one topic that Miss Jacqueline was definitely very uncomfortable with doing. I still get anxious when I need to say a prayer out loud, especially within a group of people or praying with other people. I was always afraid of what I should say or if what I would say is something inappropriate. I'm sure I'm not alone with this problem and I hope that this study can encourage in your prayer lives as well. So, first things first, let's open in prayer. Dear God, our almighty and powerful God, we come before you to ask for your guidance as we learn about prayer. Help us that we may understand about prayer better and that we may be encouraged to grow in our prayer lives. We love you and we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, what is prayer? Prayer is simply talking to God. That simple? Yes. Just like we talk with our parents, our brothers and sisters, our friends, our teachers, coaches, grandparents. Prayer is simply talking to God. God loves us very much and He wants us to hear from us. And just like our parents or our friends who love to hear from us. In our study of Discover How to Pray, we will first use the inductive method of observation by asking the right questions, such as the five W's and H questions. What, who, where, when, why, and, you guess it right, how? First W question. What can we pray about? The answer is, you can pray just about anything. That's right. God will listen to any of your prayers, no matter how minor or insignificant, or how you feel or what you say. God can always help you. Sometimes we think that God has much more important things to worry about than my little problems, that I don't need to involve God in it. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 30, Jesus told his disciples, And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. And in Psalm 147, verse 4, tells us that God determines the number of the stars and calls them each by name. God cares about every detail of our lives and so nothing is ever too small or too bothersome for God. Second W question, who can we pray for? Well, the answer is anyone. We can definitely pray for ourselves, but God loves it when we pray for other people. We can pray for our parents, our family, our friends, and even strangers. We can also pray for our city, our country, our world, and the world leaders. We can pray about anything and anyone that God puts in our heart to pray for. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1, it says, I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people. Ask God to help them intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. Pray this way for kings and all who are in authority so that we can live peaceful and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. 
Guess what is the third W question? When can we pray? The answer is any time. It is never too early or too late to pray. You can't pray too long and you can't pray too short either. Any time is a great time to pray, day or night, when you're young or old, when you're happy or sad. It's always a good time to talk to God. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. It is a good idea to set aside a specific time during the day or night to pray and also read the Bible when we're alert. But we can pray in our hearts as we ride the bus or the MTR and as we drive or walk down the street or talk with a friend. And even when we're tired at the end of the day, we can still pause to thank God for all his blessings. The fourth W question. Where can we pray? The answer is anywhere. You can talk to God inside or outside. You can pray at home, at church, at school, or at the restaurant. You can talk to God whether you're alone or with other people. God will listen to you anywhere you are. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 8, in every place of worship, I want men to pray with holy hands lifted up to God, free from anger and controversy. Miss Jacqueline drives a lot, and I would pray or talk to God when I'm in a car or when I'm driving, of course with my eyes wide open, but I will still talk to God even when I'm driving. So you can pray to God anywhere. The fifth and last W question, why do we pray? When you pray, you basically invite God into your life. In Jeremiah 29, 12 to 13, the Lord says, Then you will call out to me. You will come to me and pray to me, and I will listen to you. When you look for me with all your heart, you will find me. In King David's prayer in Psalm 17, verse 6, he said, my God, I call out to you because you will answer me. Listen to me. Hear my prayer. When we earnestly seek for God, he will find us. He will listen and he will answer us. Okay, this week we will memorize the Bible verse from Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for being available for us at any time and anywhere that we can come to you in prayers. Thank you for listening to us and thank you for answering us. We love you and we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. We will continue next week with the H question. How do we pray? So stay tuned. See you all next Sunday. Bye.